Hello. So my name is uh, Louis Remy, and together with uh, Yannick and the rest of the team, we are building Prototypo. So Prototypo is an application for uh, graphic designers that allows them to customize fonts uh, and make them their own. But I'm not here to talk about uh, Prototypo. I'm here to talk about two technologies, technologies that are uh, really important uh, to, to make Prototypo, parametric fonts and the web. As you might have heard earlier today, a revolution is coming up. So far, type design, uh, in type design, most of the power has been put in the hand of uh, type designers and little power has been left to graphic designers. Type designers start with a blank page and a pen and graphic designers can only choose a family and pick a variant. Even in the case of super families, it's the type designer, type designer responsibility to choose the granularity and the range of available variants. But there are two reasons why this situation is about to change. The first reason is that we've all felt the frustration of graphic designers of only being consumers of fonts. They, although they don't know how to design fonts, they have a good sense of what they need. Uh, they want the ability to customize fonts, to tailor them to their, to their work, uh, and to make them unique. The second reason is that uh, digital typefaces can now be displayed on, uh, on devices that come in, in a wide range of uh, uh, sizes, shapes, and that can be used in many, many different ways. And we need fonts that can be sent somewhere in the cloud, forget about, and that will be adapted to the context uh, at read time, just in time. So there are different technologies that will make this revolution possible. And I start by focusing on two technologies that play a key role here, in, in my opinion. So there are not particularly new technologies, but they're getting easier to use. Interpolated font. Uh, so as you know, there are two or more uh, fonts that have been specially crafted to be, uh, to be mixed together to create new intermediary variants. Uh, and most, uh, most type design applications are now able to, to interpolate fonts. And parametric fonts are, arithmi uh, are algorithmic algorithmically generated fonts. So algorithm is pretty much a buzzword these days. So in any context you hear this word, it, this word it's important to remember that it just means a recipe written for a computer. So a parametric font is a recipe for a font with its mandatory list of ingredients. But for each ingredient, the quantity is left up to the reader. Now when you start following a banana bread recipe, you can be certain that no matter how much you mess up the quantities, you'll never end up with a chicken curry soup. Same goes for a parametric font. It's a recipe for a certain kind of font, not for any font. So how do parametric fonts and interpolated font compare? Well, the biggest advantage of interpolated fonts is that they can be produced with the tools and knowledge that type designers already possess. Uh, you have to respect certain, certain rules, though. You have to design uh, many different masters, uh, uh, as many masters as interpolation axes you want to offer in your font. And for each glyph, uh, I mean, a glyph needs to have the same number of points and same direction of contours across the different masters. And not only do you need to draw uh, many different masters, but if you want to make a stylistic change to your family, if you want to make an important change to your family, then you need to make that change across the different masters. Parametric fonts are different in that they, there is only one master. And instead of uh, following design rules and applying them uh, uh, across the different masters, then you express those rules using code and you let the computer follow them. So in this uh, little example, you see that uh, uh, you can, using little code, uh, give instructions to, 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 your, to, to, to the computer to always keep uh, a point in a contour, to always make it uh, follow, uh, to be on, 
on a curve in another contour. And that's something that isn't always possible with interpolating, with inter interpolated fonts. Uh, and in this example, you can see, so well, that's a, an example of, of the kind of rules that you can set uh, with code uh, in parametric fonts. Another advantage of parametric fonts is that they're easy to build as components, and some components like serifs, diacritics, and some punctuation can easily be reused across families. Interpolated fonts and parametric fonts have all the characteristics to be part of this revolution because they can be adapted by the user and to their context. And of course, no interpolated fonts uh, will be available in, in uh, much more applications thanks to open type variation, uh, which is basically a, an official format for, for uh, interpolated fonts. And the good news is that uh, parametric fonts can also be compiled on to, uh, to open type variation fonts without losing too much uh, adaptability, although the, the, the tools are not there yet to, to make a direct uh, conversion from parametric fonts to, uh, to, inter to font variations, to variable fonts. So open type, GX is of, uh, open type variations is, of course, another piece of technology that's, that, is, uh, that will play a key role in the, in the upcoming revolution. And uh, with, uh, with interpolated, with, uh, with uh, parametric fonts and, and, and the web, uh, let me see. Okay, sorry, I missed up my slides. Uh, no, and the, and the, the final uh, piece of technology that is going to play a key role in the upcoming revolution is, I believe, the, the web, because the web already makes uh, all this, this adaptation possible. Web browsers are omnipotent and, and ubiquitous technological wonders. Uh, they are available on most modern devices, and they can do uh, a lot of things. They can display content, images, videos, and, of course, text. And they can manipulate this content. Uh, as you've seen, if, if you've seen the, the OpenType.js presentation, then you know that, uh, that now in the browser you can not only uh, read fonts and manipulate them, you, you can also create fonts uh, in the browser. And uh, the web, web browser also have access to all the sensors that are available on, on modern devices. It means they can, they can give context to, to your content. And for example, they can answer questions such as, uh, um, what is the size of the screen? Uh, what is the ambient luminosity? Uh, what, how far is the reader from the screen? Where on earth am I? And and these three, uh, these, these three capabilities of web browser: the ability to display content, to manipulate it, and, and to give it context, open up a lot of possibilities. So I am going to make a few, a few demos. So. So you've been seeing the first demonstration. Uh, does it play? No? Let me see. OK, here it play. Here it goes. So you can, on the web, uh, interpolate fonts without, uh, in, in, like in most browsers, without having to wait for, uh, for, variation, for, font vari for open type variations, like we, we've been building this demonstration two years ago. Uh, we've been building another demonstration where we uh, animate fonts by generating uh, uh, new fonts 30 times per, se per second in the browser. And we've been using that possibility not to create uh, ugly animation in the browser, but for practical, practical usage in, in Prototypo. Uh, and now we ha I'm going to show three, uh, a set of demonstration that show the practical interest of uh, uh, parametric fonts in the browser and what you can, uh, what you can do for, uh, to adapt your, your, your design to the, to the content. So the first example is a, a display version of a, of a font where you add more details to your font, you, you increase the contrast 
and uh, and uh, and add details to the service. And then uh, another demonstration with two different uh, size of columns, and you adapt the width of your of your fonts to those columns. Uh, here is another demonstration where we use uh, white text on the black background and increase the, the weight of the font to accommodate this change. Uh, in this demonstration, uh, which is called the Caption, yes, we are, we are reducing here the details to uh, produce a version of the font that will be displayed in smaller sizes. And then in the last demonstration, we are building uh, a font that we're adapting to the ambient luminosity. We're varying, uh, again, the, the contrast and the weight of the, uh, of the font. And that's a, a demonstration that works only in Firefox uh, because this browser is able to, to use the, the camera or the luminosity sensor on your computer, on your mobile phone uh, to, give, to give this information to the web page and, and to the font. And we've also built more experimental demonstration. Uh, I have two, demonstra two, two experiments that we've built with, uh, with students during workshops. So here we've connected our parametric font to the Yahoo API, to the Yahoo API, and we've displayed the, uh, the name of the cities and, and influenced their, their appearance with, uh, uh, with the, the weather in this, in, in this city. So uh, we've connected the temperature with the weight, the wind speed with the slant, the latitude with the X height, and as you can see, it's pretty hot in Ouagadougou. Uh, it's pretty windy in Nuuk, and there is one city in the southern hemisphere which isn't readable anymore. <laughs> and in, the, in this little experiment, uh, we've uh, connected the microphone on, of, the, of the computer to our parametric font, and we've connected three different pitch heights to uh, three different parameters of our letters. Uh, so, so this is a recorded demonstration, but if you whistle, if you, if you go to uh, lab.prototypo.com, there, there are those uh, experiments, and you can whistle to your computer and see type change in real time. So at Prototypo, we believe parametric type design has the potential to save a lot of time to type designers. And this is why we are investing a lot of efforts into our parametric font technologies. We've already done uh, many different experiments. We've tried many different approaches to parametric font construction. We've tried designing a brand new language to, to build parametric fonts, just like Metafont did 30 years ago. We've tried uh, constructing parametric outlines from, uh, from, uh, from, a, a, pen, from a, a skeleton and a pen. We've tried uh, drawing outlines using parametric contours. Uh, we've tried using Bezier curves, we've tried using hobby curves, the curves that are used in, in Metafont, etc. And what we've learned during all these experiments is that type design, parametric type design is possible, but that there is an unsolvable equation between uh, the ease of use of the tool and the creative possibilities. The easier uh, a, creative, uh, a tool is to use, the less possibilities it will, uh, the, the less freedom and the less possibilities it, it will give, give to the creator. Uh, you, have to, you have to balance the two and there isn't always a good and, and a bad solution. Sometimes all there is is a choice. And that's why we're now trying to, to build tools that will allow uh, type designers to create parametric fonts and give them much more choice in how they, they build their, their recipes. The biggest effort we are doing in this direction is uh, the Prototypo Builder. It's a, a tool that tries to reconcile um, logic and arithmetic without which parametric uh, type design isn't possible with a more uh, visual tool without which type designers uh, can't approach parametric, parametric type design. And so just like uh, interpolated fonts have been uh, interpolated fonts and, and uh, multiple masters and OpenTypeGX have been around for uh, many many years. 
that are now finally uh, getting in the hands of, of, uh, of graphic designers and uh, of designers in general. Uh, we believe that uh, parametric type design, which has already uh, also be uh, in the making for like 30 years, 30 years, will be part of the of the next revolution. Uh, and if you want to, if you are interested in trying our tools and contributing knowledge and, and helping us being, building these parametric type design tools, then please get in touch with us. We do have time for uh, one question. Does anybody have a question? Okay, so we may be able to finish on time and not all get thrown out by security. Um, is Philip and um, Martin around? Or oh, they disappeared.